I always stood at one of the exit doors of our sanctuary and greeted our congregation as they took what they had just heard and went out to face the world. One particular Sunday, one of our young college students, who obviously was a weightlifter, asked me this question. When I shook his hand, Pastor, where did you get that grip? Have you been working out? I responded with as serious a look as I could muster at the moment and said, it's from milking cows from the time I was nine until I went away to college. I laughed out loud as his face expressed an incredulous look because he had no context for seeing his pastor in that way. I have learned that to get a grip on life, you must maintain a solid grip on the Lord's hand as he grips yours. Welcome to the Renaissance gathering coming to you on a snowy day from Washington, D.C. And David said, The Lord who kept me safe from the grip of the lion and the bear will be my Savior from the hands of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. 1 Samuel 17, when David faced the Philistine Goliath, he knew without any doubt that God's grip on his life was stronger than the grip of the lion and the bear or any giant that he might face. He could rest in the fact that God would never betray him, and so can you. Today, the giants of physical and mental well-being, finances, instability in our country, at home and abroad, wars and rumors of wars, and increasingly persecution of Christians and Jews seem to loom larger than ever before. We must identify with the young psalmist David the shepherd boy who sang of God's greatness and majesty in his worship to the Lord in the dark, cold, lonely nights in the fields watching over his father's sheep. David's courage as a young person and future king of Israel was developed by circumstances and experiences that we read about in the following passage of Scripture. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, the 32nd verse through the 37th verse reads, And David said to Saul, Let no man's heart become feeble because of him, speaking of Goliath. I, your servant, will go out and have a fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight with him, for you are only a boy. And he has been a man of war from his earliest days. And David said to Saul, Your servant has been the keeper of his father's sheep, and if a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went out after him and overcame him and took it out of his mouth. And if turning on me, he came at me, I took him by the hair and overcame him and put him to death. Your servant has overcome lion and bear and the fate of this Philistine 
who is without circumcision will be like theirs, seeing that he has put shame on the armies of the living God. And David said, The Lord, who kept me safe from the grip of the lion and the bear, will be my Savior from the hands of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Today the Lord wants to speak these words to you. Go, and I will be with you. Throughout the Old and New Testament, there are passages of Scripture that help us to know that God has a firm grip upon our lives. There are also passages of Scripture that talk about the enemies of God and His people being gripped by fear and rendered paralyzed. One of the most intimate stories of God's love for an individual who is desperately reaching out to Jesus for help is the woman who had suffered for 12 years with a bleeding condition. She was considered an outcast and could not even go into the temple or be close in contact with other people. She was lonely. She was desperate. But she knew from whom her healing would come. Luke, the 8th chapter in the 43rd verse declares, And a woman having an issue of blood for 12 years, which had spent all her living on physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him, Jesus, and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood was stopped. Like the great shepherd, psalmist, slayer of giants, warrior, and future king, David, and this simple reviled woman. It was their trust in the Lord and his grip upon their lives that gave them the confidence to hold on tightly to the Lord's promises, to his power and to his authority as their savior, redeemer, and healer in the most difficult times of their lives. God has the strong hand of the Lord resting upon you, holding you tightly in his grip, and you must keep on holding as tightly as you can onto his hand of love, mercy, and grace, and divine authority. There is an old gospel song that is the perfect prayer for each faith-filled person to be praying today. It passionately declares, Oh, to be his hand extended, reaching out to the oppressed. Let me touch him, let me touch Jesus, so that others may know and be blessed. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.